Hey everyone, I'm Petrie. I'm Chris. And welcome to another exciting episode of News Corp Republic Pro Wrestling Podcast. Uh, Chris, what are we going to be uh, talking about today? Well, unfortunately, we're going to be talking about some deaths. Mm. Um, this really hit us hard, and locally too. Like yeah. Locally, this is like everybody almost. Yeah. A complete wipeout, unfortunately. When they say it comes in threes, it's just like... Bruno died with like some people around him. Yeah. And then um, Johnny, Johnny Valiant died first, but like... Pittsburgh local wrestling. Mm-hmm. You had Bruno, you had Johnny Valiant, mm-hmm. and now today you had Nick Busick. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big hit. I yeah, mean, it really is. I don't know how much more I could, like, I'm afraid to go on the internet anymore. Yeah. I mean, it's almost like every two, three weeks apart here, someone's passing away, and it's just like, it's unbelievable. And it, and it first started with Johnny Valiant. I remember um, I got a text message from a family member. They showed me a local. Uh, article and i heard about this news story earlier in the day they said a man got hit on mcknight road trying to cross the road around five o'clock in the morning and he wasn't like on a crosswalk just tried to cross mcknight road Uh, if you live in pittsburgh you know mcknight road that's like route 51 which is insane people fly on that road right um so they didn't really say you know who the person was they didn't identify him well then the family member sent me the message and they said it was performer wwe wwf wrestler johnny valiant and i was like whoa i mean i first of all i had no idea he even lived here yeah, I had no idea either. I mean, talk about keeping a low profile. He yeah. did. Um, and then, you know, more news articles started coming in. Internet articles started coming in. Wrestling articles. And we knew it was legit. Like, he did pass away. Yeah. Um, what a shame. Oh. Especially, like, what a way to go out, too. I know. Being hit by... It was a truck. And there was no foul play. It was just a freak accident. Uh, the truck driver stopped and waited, you know, you know, tried to help. And, you know, he didn't flee the scene or anything. It was just a freak accident. So... Yeah. I mean, well, that's what happens. You try and cross a major, oh yeah, you know, American city street like that. You mm-hmm. know, it's, I'm it's like trying to describe what my what uh, McKnight Road is. And for those of you who don't know, if I go to you and say like, "Hey, what's that one big road that everyone knows in your town?" It's that road. Yeah, that's what he was trying to cross. And it and it was bad weather. Uh, it was raining pretty hard. Yeah, that was yeah yeah that was around the stretch. Yeah, we so. Coming. I mean, I was on McKnight Road almost daily last year in June because of my wedding and everything. We were we were practically living up McKnight Road, yeah. but um, yeah. So I was like, wow. When I heard that happen, I was I was in shock because Johnny Valiant to me, he's like, hey, you're on my, you know, he's always, he'd always like yell and scream, and you know, he was like that uh, larger than life character. Not know? necessarily a dude you expect to to hear crossing a road like that at no. five o'clock in the morning. No, it, I mean, I don't know if he was going to get coffee or what the story was, but um. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, it's a freak accident, but yeah, you wouldn't think. Like, where did he come? Like, where did he come from? Where was he going? Exactly. It's so weird. It was just so bizarre. Yeah. But like, when I found out he, that he died, the only thing I knew about him was his name. Yeah. I didn't know anything of like someone said Johnny Valiant. I'm like, hey, he's a wrestler. Yeah, but what has he done? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. I well, really don't know. Well, I mean, I can give you the whole you know long history, but I'll give you a brief one. I mean, he was a Bruno San Martino's friend. Um, okay. He grew up in, I believe, the North Hills area, and that's where Bruno lived. And he would kind of get to know Bruno, knock on his door, "Hey, Mr. San Martino, I want to, you know, be a wrestler." And actually, Bruno kind of took him under his wing for a while. Um, then he finally, you know, became a professional wrestler. Uh, worked over like for, I believe, like Dick the Bruiser's territory around that. that so it was like St. Louis ish. Yeah, somewhere over there. Yeah, and then um, came back, got hooked up with the Valiants, you know, um, Jimmy Valiant first. And then Jerry kind of joined in, and they all became the Valiant Brothers. Um, and then after that, they kind of broke off. But it was weird because, like, Jerry Valiant was still in WWF, and so was Johnny. But Johnny kind of did the management, managerial kind of role. Yeah. An announcer role. And Jerry Valiant, um, gentleman Jerry, he was just a wrestler still. But he kind of got rid of the whole Valiant Brothers look. Just kind of wore, like, the wrestling singlet, and that was it kind of thing. Um and then Jimmy Valiant, you know, went on to NWA fame and just became a whole new kind of character in a way, a uh, flamboyant character, but, you know, the people's type of champion. Uh, so Johnny Valiant, I mean, every time I think of Johnny Valiant, I think of Coliseum Home Video because it's just been embedded in my head because he used to host those things. He used to host with, like, Craig the George and Gorilla Monsoon. He was on the big event um, in 86. Him, Gorilla, and uh, Ernie Ladd did the announcing for it. Uh, so I always think of Johnny Valiant as like one of the, the color commentary guys as well. Yeah. So a lot of fun memories of Johnny Valiant. He's just a wild character. He's funny. 
He would, you know, he would do. He was a great heel manager. He would do all the cheap stunts in the ring too when he tried to wrestle, and it was always hilarious because he had like that Harpo Marx haircut, uh, like bleach blonde, like a perm kind of look. So it was really funny. I, I almost like a pompadour. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Well, it was interesting too. He was the first manager of Demolition. So oh, wow! When you think of Demolition, you think Mr. Fuji, you know. But no, it was Johnny Valiant was the first manager. Don't know why that didn't work. I guess you know. there's it's such a just. Interesting, yeah. you know. They're so different. They're just too different. Yeah. I mean, when you first look at them, and here's my problem with Demolition, and then we go back to LOD and all that nonsense. I don't think see either one as a ripoff of each other. I mean, no. Yeah. I, I'm in complete, uh, complete agreement. It's like if we're going to go into this, you know, we could be here all day because no one can wear makeup except LOD. That's what that boils down to. But the thing is, um, yeah, I guess they just didn't gel and they end up getting, you know, putting Mr. Fuji with them. Which I like Mr. Fuji, who's okay, but I, I still, once again, I don't think he was the best manager either. I almost see like a tough guy, biker kind of guy with them, like out like um, Oliver Humperdinck or somebody. Like to me, yeah. that looks more like a demolition manager. But but Fuji had like he had like a toughness about him. He had he, was. Like, he had like the the, the pedigree, he had the background, the history. He did. I just I don't know. I always felt like something was missing with that though. It's like when you see these two post-apocalyptic biker kind of guys or whatever, you don't think of some. Japanese wrestler man, you know, I just I don't know, but anyway, Johnny Valiant was awesome. Uh, he was fun to watch, and he was with the WWF till about eighty eight. Then he jumped over to the AWA, and he managed uh, at the time known as the um, Destruction Crew, but they were the Beverly Brothers yeah. in WWF. But he managed them for a while, and um, it was funny on their shoot interview. They're like, ah, they were asking, did he, did Johnny Valiant ever teach you anything? They're like, nah, he just wanted to be like an actor and stuff. They kind of like <laughs> they kind of just left about him. But um, actually, he was a local actor here. Um, he I was, didn't know this. Yeah, I didn't even know this either. He was under the Doherty Agency, so he would do, I guess, print ads, commercials, or whatever. Huh. So he um, he was taking a stab at that, and so you know it was legit too, because like you know these companies, whoever's mentioning him passing away, like they showed his you know his picture, his um, uh, I'm trying to think of whatever the actors call his picture, the headshot. Sorry. Oh. Um, on their their page on Facebook, so I'm like, yeah, this is legit. You know, he did pass away. Like he did live here. He's a, I mean, Doherty just manages people in Ohio and Pennsylvania, but uh, mainly Pittsburgh. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it was legit. So I, and I guess he just wanted to just re- retire and, and just like in peace, just like leave him alone. Yeah, he never really did a whole lot of like wrestling stuff. I don't really recall him in IWC. He did some stuff with KSWA. Yeah, and they do that a lot of the legends. They get a lot yeah. of old-time legends, and that's what's great about them. Yeah. Um, yeah, he just kind of, he wasn't around too much around here. I mean, I don't, I don't ever remember seeing him in a local show. I never, yeah, he never, like, turned up. Mm-mm, no. Danucci like, pops in every once in a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's one that you always see, but, yeah, him, no. I mean, I'm surprised he didn't go back to wrestling. I'm surprised he didn't go to WCW or maybe show up in another you know, like AWF or something in the mid '90s, just come back to the wrestling, or somebody would want to have him back because he was a pretty good character. Even WWF, I thought he may, you know, would yeah. return. I, maybe in the Attitude Era, I yeah, mean, something because like that, 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 that era, especially with like Johnny Valiant and and like the Valiant Brothers. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just bump that up to a to like eleven. You bump that up to the Attitude Era. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't that work? I know. I don't know, maybe it just, it just came down to attitudes. Maybe. I don't Could know. Could be. There's a lot of things. He actually went to military school, too, with Vince McMahon. Um, so he knew Vince McMahon way back when. Uh, so that's pretty cool. A lot of history with him. It's just it's just amazing the things you learn after someone passes away that you never really knew before. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I always remember Johnny Valiant, you know, more in his managerial role, his 80s kind of uh, run, so to speak, with WWF. So that's how I, rem- I remember him. And it was always funny. And he got his, you know... First and only wrestling figure through the LGN line as well. So, um, yeah, he's just a piece of history, so to speak. That's pretty rad. That's yeah. pretty rad. And I guess the next individual we need to speak of, I mean, we could talk about this individual for three, four, or five hours. I mean, days, weeks, years. I mean, Bruno San Martino. I don't yeah. know. I don't, the name oh. says it all there. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to find this article. A buddy of ours wrote it. Uh, Bill Hughes, mm-hmm. he compares uh, San Martino to CM Punk, and mm. he draws a, a lot of parallels, and it's actually really cool. Oh, that's interesting. Hearing about Bruno's passing actually wrecked me a little bit. Yeah, and I regretted not meeting him. 
That yeah. was the one thing. And, you know, I, with Bruno San Martino here locally, they had studio wrestling reunions, which we didn't find out till years later on YouTube. I mean, it was, a, it was at our local mall. He'd always come to, like, you know, different shopping centers or plazas. And, and I always found out after the fact, most of the time. And so I always kind of regretted not going just to meet him to see what he was like. Yeah. Because uh, I've met a lot of wrestlers before. But, yeah, he was one that was always here locally, always around. Yeah, he was, he was always here. He was just, always here. We just never had that chance. Like, we met Danucci at the one show. Yeah. Um, he's pretty pretty big guy, too. Like, Danucci? Pretty, yeah. Oh, shake his hand. Yeah, we oh. did. Yeah, I remember... I was like, looking at him, like, I didn't really think you were that tall, but he was about 6'3 or 4. Yeah. Um, so that was neat to meet him. But, yeah, we never got to meet Bruno. Um, and that's a shame, you know. We mm-hmm. never will, unfortunately. But No. Boy, I mean, when he passed, it was all over the news locally. Yeah. Um, I was surprised it wasn't, like, on the CBS Evening News or the NBC News. Well, they're off doing their own, yeah. their own I thing. I was surprised. But like, though. Sports Center, I think, did something. Yeah. The local news had it here, I mean, all the time. They were talking yeah. about it. Um, you know, he was world champion for, I think, WWF world champion for, what, 12 years or so? Yeah. So, that's a huge reign. I mean, countless opponents. I mean, he was the guy. He was Hogan before Hogan. Yes. I mean, and I think he's bigger than Hogan probably in the scheme of things. I mean, if you look at that time period, I mean, Hogan didn't have the belt for that long. And he yeah. wore out after a while, too. I mean, you figure by 90, 91, Hogan's starting to get kind of stale. Um, Bruno never really did, I guess, so to speak. No, but, like, people will always... T- they love the Italian Superman. Yeah, and the Worldwide Wrestling Federation at the time, they were always big on ethnic uh, gimmicks, so to speak. So yeah. like the Italians, the Germans, uh, the Polish power, Ivan Putski, and all that. Um, so that was that was big. And he was big on studio wrestling here, too. Um, Channel, the Channel 11, they used to do studio wrestling. Yeah. And he was a part of that. So, I mean, a big piece of wrestling history is gone. You know, it's like losing Luthez, you know? It really is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Luthez, Bruno, those are the big names, you think, in wrestling. I, I still, like, I, I still, like, wanted more time with Bruno. I know. I'm like, like him going in the Hall of Fame now would have been completely different rather than, like, him doing it a couple of years ago. Yeah, and like, a, couple, a couple of years ago, that was, like, you know... I, know, I, of, I know you have your thing about it. Yeah, it was kind of funny about that, because I was just yeah. like... For 20-something years, I listened to Bruno San Martino complain about WWE or F at the time, you know, with the steroid scandal, the sex scandal with the kids or whatever that was, the harassment scandals, all that stuff. He, like, you know, spoke out about it, and you got behind Bruno, like, hey, he's not taking a man's crap. And then all of a sudden, you know, Triple H calls, and they, you know, they make their peace or whatever, so to speak. I think he's, you know. Well, that was all trips. Yeah. That was all trips. Yeah, because, I mean, I, I, to this day, I'll never believe that Bruno and Vince really reconciled i just don't see that but vince, vince showed up to the funeral he did which i was stephanie very, showed up to the i was funeral. very surprised shocked by that i would never think they. i had a hard time imagining you know like his chauffeur was like driving off driving up like maybe he was got lost mm-hmm. and like oh, i'll ask for directions and something like yenzer hey how do i get to so and so church I was like, well, you go down there. You go where the gas station used to be. It's like some like Yinzer giving oh, yeah. Vince McMahon some like weird Yinzer directions. Yeah, I know. It's where this and that used to be. Yeah, like, like he ain't hanging out like in console and nah. like the nice bars. No, nah. he's in the thick of it now. He is. He really is. Yeah, I did not expect him to show up. I mean, he does respect Bruno. I think it's out of respect. But it, yeah, I, I don't. I still don't think they got along. I mean, you can't. I just I watch the videos, the content. It's more Triple H. But even when Bruno said, oh, they cleaned it up and all that, they, they, they didn't. It's a lot better than, yeah, no, they definitely it, cleaned it up. They cleaned it up to an extent, but not where. It's not they, good. That's the, that's the catch. It's clean. It's just not good. Well, no, I mean like the drugs and all that. Like oh, the, the steroids drugs. and all that. There's no doubt in my mind some of those guys are still juicing. So, I mean, oh, anybody yeah. can see. So, to me, he didn't really clean up anything. They're not, they're not coked out of their minds. Though. No, I mean, it's not like that. But, yeah, it's still a drug atmosphere, I think. Yeah. Um, and that's just my opinion. I mean, people could think differently, but. That's just the way I see it. So it's hard for me to believe that he just... I mean, I think him and Triple H probably got... You know, have a better relationship than compared yeah. to him and Vince. Because Vince said some nasty stuff and Bruno wasn't too... He was more respectful about how he, like, kind of backtalked McMahon. But McMahon was just... He was brutal with some of the stuff he said about Bruno. Uh, well, uh, Linda threatened to sue San Martino if San Martino to c- continue to use Bruno San Martino. Wow. That's his legal name. Yeah, what You're I, the good competitor said that. Yeah. I mean, like, how do you... That doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, he couldn't win that lawsuit. They want to own everything, though. They want to own, yeah. you know, everything. Like Disney. 
Yeah, I mean, you can't hold, you, you can't own the NWO, like, you know, their, their the side. Yeah. yeah, I mean, come on. I think Wade Boggs was doing that, Kurt Henning said, way before the NWO did it. They just stole it, you know, so whatever. But they're big with that. Inter- with that they're the first. Yeah, intellectual property rights. Ooh, yeah. They love that. But, yeah, um, Vince showed up, which was interesting. Um, also, uh, Shane Douglas was at the funeral. Dominic DiNucci. Oh, yeah. Chris Cruz was there. They said Larry Sabisco was there, uh, new source. And, um, yeah, there's some big names in professional wrestling. And I'm with you. We should have went. To the uh, we should. I felt funny though. I, I didn't want to like intrude because I I, I, I never I, met him. I felt like I felt like it would have been like the same thing too. Like yeah, it's just like oh, like I'm gonna... here to like you know oh would you be on our podcast? Yeah, oh, we don't want to do that. Did you sign this? Like no, like come on. Yeah, I mean, I didn't want to do that. I know I wasn't going to do that. I just didn't want to come across like I was going to. Yeah, do I that. felt funny too. I I didn't want to come across like that either. I just want to be respectful, you know. Yeah. I mean, it was a it was a it was a Catholic funeral, mm-hmm. and you just you just don't do that. Yeah. You you want to do that for any other for anyone else or yeah. For, yeah. I just couldn't do it, and and the fans went down for the viewing, and that's fine too. But I just yeah. I just didn't think we kind of belong there, you know, so to speak. I just thought we were out of place, but um, it, it's so hard to break down all the accomplishments. He he did it all. I mean, Bruno did it all. I mean, you can say from a merchandising standpoint, maybe he didn't because, they, you know, I don't know. There wasn't many, really much yeah. merchandise. But, I mean, I don't know how many times, but it was enough. He sold out enough, yeah. I mean, he owned the garden in a way. Yeah. Um, and he even said that McMahon wanted him to come back when Hogan was was there in the 80s because they weren't doing as well as they thought. Uh, I don't know how true that is. You know, that's just hearsay. But, I mean, he did come back and he did wrestle. So, I mean, they had to – and plus he was trying – they were trying to make his son, you know, he was trying to get his son – you know his foot in the door right. too, David. Um, he was a bad. No, I just don't think I don't think they knew what to do, or you know there were. There, and once again, it goes back to McMahon feuding with Bruno and all that too behind the scenes. I don't know how that, you know, that all played out, but um, you know it seemed like what Bruno was saying was that you know they would stop pushing David as soon as Bruno didn't want to wrestle, and then as soon as he put the tights back on, they'd push David a little bit more, and you know they did the tag team with Beefcake and Valiant against him and yeah. Um, you know, Bruno and his son, and then they did, I think, Beefcake against his son at Mania 1, and, you know, his dad was in his corner, and uh, Valiant was in Beefcake's corner. So it's yeah. nice to see those two working together, too, old friends, Bruno and Johnny Valiant. But, yeah, I mean, him and McMahon, they just disagreed. We watched that whole him and uh, McMahon square off on CNN and all that with this, you know, steroid scandal and all that. So, yeah, that was a hardcore feud for a while there. Um, Bruno wrestled his final match, too, with Hogan. In 1987, against the One Man Gang and King Kong Bundy, it was like really? a house show. Yeah, they te- they teamed up. That's interesting. It was very interesting. He was also on the first Halloween Havoc. That's that. Yeah, you said that. That blew my mind. That was for WCW. Yeah, it was pretty cool. And he, 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 it was funny at the point in the match too. He's in the cage and he, he just wails the great mood and knocks him real good in the mouth because the mood was cheating or something. But that was that was neat to see him on that show. In that kind of situation with Ric Flair and Sting and Terry Funk, a lot of other legends, you know? Yeah. So that was cool. Um, I remember Bruno, you know, I just missed him on his, like, final run, so to speak. I kind of started watching him when um, the whole steroid scandal happened and he was shooting with McMahon. But I used to watch the tapes. You know, he wrestled, wrestled he only wrestled on one WrestleMania that was WrestleMania 2 in the uh, football. Uh, yeah, how shocking is that? I know. You'd think he'd be in more, like three or something, but no. Just uh, WrestleMania 2, he's in the Battle Royal. And he didn't. And I was yeah, like, he was in a battle royal. Like, you, where was he for WrestleMania one? Well, he was with David because David was wrestling Beefcake, I believe. And he was like, you in his can't. Corner. Like, I don't know, man. Yeah. I, I think Bruno yeah. could have probably wrestled on WrestleMania three. They could have put him with somebody. They could have had a match. Um, just don't know who. But yeah, I'm not sure. He had a. You go back and, and you watch it in the. In Boston Garden, mm-hmm. him versus uh, Macho Man. Oh, that was great! Yeah, holy wow! Because they they both do their own thing, mm-hmm. but they it just like gels together so perfectly. Yeah, he had a lot of great. He had some matches with uh, Piper, uh, Savage, Honky Tonk Man, uh, Hercules. He wrestled once. Um, I think a couple others, but yeah, it was neat to see like the old versus the new. And I was surprised he wasn't in that Meadowlands Battle Royal. They had that Legends Battle Royal. I can't believe you found um, a video of it. Yeah, I found that. Yeah, because I, I knew it existed, and there's actually another Battle Royal later on that night. But like Pat O'Connor, um, who else is in that? Killer Kowalski. A lot of other big names uh, were in that. Luthez. I was surprised Bruno wasn't technically in it because he's a legend. But maybe because he was active still. Maybe they didn't think he. Yeah. I don't know. But um, 
yeah, I mean, just what a great career. And then after that, you know, he kind of he showed up again in Halloween Havoc 92. He was at the Clash of Champions 92 with a 20-year anniversary for WCW with Andre and Gary Michael Capetta. They took a picture. Um, then he just kind of was, you know, here and there when they would bring up wrestling here locally, he would be on... Um, they they talk about him on the news. He would come in and critique wrestling, or he'd talk about things. And then they yeah. started doing a lot of his um, like biographies and like you know documentaries for him. Yeah. Um, and, and, then, and dude broke his neck. Yeah. Stan I mean, Stan Hansen like dropped him on a soup on a body slam by accident and broke his neck. Yeah. And came back. I know. He came back. I mean that's the difference too. Hogan used Roy's. Bruno never did. Yeah. And Bruno's probably stronger than Hogan. You know. So, I mean, he's just a natural, he's a power lifter, weight lifter, just a natural athlete. And, um, I mean, just an extraordinary career. I mean, all the matches he had, all the, him and Sabisco, what a great, oh my, yeah. legendary, like, you know. The showdown at, at Shea, yeah, come on. That was great to finally watch that show, too, on um, the WWE Classics or whatever. That was a good show. That was. That's a good show. You want a fun time, you watch the showdown at Shea. Yeah, I mean, it was awesome. I was like, I finally get to see this cage match because I always heard about it and read about it. Now I finally get to see it, you know. And it's a good match. It's a great match, yeah. actually. And it's just like Bruno's like ready to kill Sabisco. It was just so much fun <laughs> to watch. And it's like the teacher against the student. And it's just great build up. And he was saying too that the other stadiums were filled too with sporting events, and they still drew a huge crowd that night yeah. in New York. So I mean, that's awesome. I mean, you know, him against um, Ivan Koloff. Um, I mean, just Bruno had it all. I mean, it's all these feuds. Yeah. You could sit there and talk about it for days. Him and Buddy Rogers, they, those two didn't get along. Um, I, I, I the really, Nazis. Yeah, I mean, for goodness sakes, his whole story about coming to America. It's the Ameri- he yeah, is the he, American dream. He, yeah. Forget Dusty Rhodes. Bruno San Martino is the American dream. He, he lived that life, and um, he's just the American hero overall. I mean, you yeah. can't. He's the end-all, be-all, I think, in professional wrestling. It's a, it's a, it's a wonderful American story. Mm-hmm. It really is American. Yeah. And he was in that Herb Abrams UWF as well after WWF for a little bit. That was like that 1990 to like 92 kind of period. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was with them. So that was fun too to see him, you know, new light. But yeah, I mean, after that, I mean, David showed up on Nitro one time, wrestled D Malenko. And they had a decent match. Um, but that was like the last time I saw David San Martino. Yeah, you know, like apparently he just couldn't get booked. Yeah, I mean, he was in that UWF with his dad. And then, yeah, Nitro. That was an awkward finish for him and Malenko. I was watching their match. It's like they counted one, two, he kicked out, and the ref counted, like, didn't count three, and it was just a mess. And they still ended in, yeah. In okay. like, yeah, but I, I think they could have done more with David. Um, it's a shame, because he was, just, he was a good athlete, too. Um, but, yeah, Bruno. I'm going to miss him. I'm like, I yeah. never met him, and I'm going to miss him. They, I mean, they, you know, they made a statue of him in Italy, for goodness sakes. I yeah. mean, just. And there's one here, though, right? Isn't there? I'm not sure. I thought they were supposed to, but they didn't. I thought it's like in, it's in like not shady side, shady side, but like they they get they put like a Lawrenceville, um, like home of like Bruno Sam, yeah. Dan Marino, yeah. whoever, and, and Bruno, Bruno San Martino. Yeah, but I don't think they, they were supposed to make a statue. I don't think they ever did. Thanks, what Pence. To find, yeah, no, what to find out about that? I want to talk about this too before we move on to mm-hmm. Nick Pesek. The Pens vetoed a Bruno San Martino statue. Let's not forget that. They ruined WrestleMania 13 for us, too. Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah, Let, let's not let's hold that against them. Right? right. Two strikes there. Then they just lost this year's uh, playoffs. That's three strikes, in my opinion. <laughs> well, they won back-to-back yeah. twice. Yeah. So, I'll, like, I'll give them that. But, like, you know what, guys? Come on. You want to say you're a part of this city? Then honor this man. I know. Light it's, up. It's the Civic Arena. I mean, mm-hmm. like, he shared that building with you. Mm-hmm. He let you come in. You guys sucked for like 20 years. I I don't want to hear it. I know. But Bruno, I mean, just the whole span, the whole career is just legendary. And and he is in the Hall of Fame. Um, You know, WWE Hall of Fame, he deserves it. Yeah. Um, He deserves to be in any wrestling Hall of Fame, in my opinion. Uh, Just Uh, any Hall of Fame as a human being in general. Local celebrity, national celebrity, you know, worldwide. International celebrity. celebrity. Yeah, international celebrity. You know, I was thinking about this, and like he's like like one of the first... Like really like main say like international stars. Yeah, you I mean, have like a few from like you have like George Hackenschmitz and like yeah. people like that, but like like a Noki, Andre. Yeah, Bruno. Yeah, exactly. Bruno. He's just right up. Trying to think, like who would be like the first like inter- American international star? Probably Bruno. 
Yeah. Because he wrestled in Japan? No, he was, he's Italian. Oh, Italian. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, we're all different in this, ethnicities, but um, I don't know. I maybe, mean, maybe Hogan? Like, really? Like, for, like, maybe for, like, our generation, too. Like, no one really from the from the 70s. Maybe Flair. Yeah. He's like, the 80s, kind of, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and in the 70s, why? Well, I mean, you could say Harley Race, probably. Harley Race. The Briscoes, you know. They, there's all those NWA guys that kind of fall into that, but I don't know, like... They fit that NWA mold, but not like everybody combined, like you know, yeah. worldwide or This is not like Andre. Yeah, it's more like Andre, probably. Yeah, I think. But um, yeah, I mean Bruno, he just what a career, and he still, you know, he, he he believed in his, you know, his morals, and he stood by yeah. them. Um, yeah, I mean, and he'll be missed forever. And he didn't change for WWE. They had to change for him. Mm-hmm. Trips had to anyway. He had to spend it. Yeah, they always wanted to get Bruno in there, and then he finally agreed because it was hard. I heard. You yeah, know? But, years took years. Yeah, a long time. Well, the next person is Big Bully Nick Busick. Yeah, for yeah, I mean, who? Uh, this just happened. I, I don't yeah, know how much. This, yeah, it's happened I'm today. A, yeah, I don't know how much more I can take of this. I mean, geez. Um, well, like, for those of you like who who don't know, I mean, like he like. He always he never tops it, but he always makes the list of like of weird gimmicks. Yeah. So he was doing like this nineteen twenties, nineteen thirties, you know, tough guy, mm-hmm. you know, pub house brawler kind of like thing. Mm-hmm. But I, I I always liked that gimmick. I thought it was a good gimmick. I mean, for the time and what it was, um, I thought they could have gone further with it. I don't know really what happened, why he got released and all that, because he's just one of those guys. I really... yeah, he didn't spend like all that much. All that time in WWE. Yeah, he was there a hot second. Really, he was gone by. He came in August and he was gone by Survivor Series. He's supposed to be in that team with Skinner and Berserker and Colonel Mustafa, aka Iron Sheik. But then he just got pulled. So something happened. Yeah. Hey, if you know what happened, please post it on our page. Yeah. Or on YouTube as well. Let us know. But, um, yeah, I mean that's that's probably like the the most amount of time people remember from was like that short time in WWF. Um, he wrestled in Global for a while. And then, yeah, he like, and he was like always wrestling too. Like he was always yeah. going from like place to place. You know, a lot of like people did like recaps of his career when he was alive. You know, he was like a power lifter too. Yeah, um, he was like still working, mm-hmm. still working out. Local celebrity here. Uh, he was on the news. He had a fighting cancer. Yeah, a few times there. I, so I think that's tough. what claimed him. I I just know that he died. Yeah, it's tough, man. When you battle cancer, it gets you know, it's a heck of a battle. Well, he had like he had like something like. Uh, like bone cancer, brain cancer. I'm not sure. I know it's cancer, but I'm not sure. Yeah, exactly. he had like it was like pretty serious. Yeah, serious stuff. Maybe like it was like stage three, and it was just like okay. Uh. Yeah, it's a heck of a battle. Yeah. Um, I believe he was in Jim Crockett promotion briefly too for a little bit. Yeah, and he was a um. He was another. He always did lots of stuff for like local promotions too. Yeah, definitely around yeah. this area, like West Virginia, he, he, Pittsburgh. Yeah. Mainly around West Virginia, but every once in a while he'd make the trek up. Yeah, he would wrestle. He wrestled for Five Star Wrestling a few years back too. Yeah. Um, and he was managed by Harvey Wimpleman in WWF. That was kind of a weird time. Like Harvey Wimpleman is the the manager because like. Well, I kind of like that. It was it was the doctor, of course, Doctor yeah. Wimpleman. But um. Yeah, he. Uh, uh, yeah, he wrestled here in the Civic Arena in May of 78, losing to Billy Red Lions. Um, so he was with WW, WWF at the time. Um, yeah, just kind of traveled here and there, it looks like. There's not a lot of information on him. Um, but definitely another great wrestler gone too soon. I mean, jeez. Right. Because, um, like, he like you know, he didn't have to give, but he gave yeah. after he retired. Mm-hmm. You know? Seems like an overall nice guy. I never met him once again. No, it doesn't, doesn't seem like meet. it doesn't seem like a, a lot of people had a, lot, a whole lot of negative things to say. Like minus the gimmick, but like I never heard like anything. Like at least like locally, he's like, oh, you know, it's a weird guy that that music. Yeah, yeah. No one, I never heard that. Mm-hmm. Never heard that. That's good then. Yeah, yeah. So I would wish I could spend more time talking about a uh, uh, music. What a mustache, though. I'm sorry. You know, I, I want to go back to this. Yeah. Love that gimmick. with the Vaude Villains. I, yeah, I thought, you know, and he could even manage them. Why did they bring him back as a manager for them? Maybe know? he was sick. Could be. Uh, yeah. I mean, it makes it. See, but, but if he wasn't sick, I would still like to have seen that. Yeah. 
That's like when there's um, Law Resistance debuted. Like, bring Frenchie Martin back. That makes sense, you know. Like, a lot of these older guys can still, like, you know, right. be managers. Tony like. Atlas did it. Yeah. Who else just did it recently? Someone, like, like really weird. Paul Ellering came back. Yeah, yeah. Paul Ellering. Yeah. I mean, you can do it. I mean, just get the right gimmick, the right characters. But who knows? Maybe they try to reach out to some wrestlers, and then they just say no. They yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. Wish we could say more. We just don't know enough, you know. Uh, you know, honestly, and you know, like you know, we'll post some stuff on the New School New School Republic Pro Wrestling Pop Podcast uh, Facebook. We'll post some stuff there. We'll post some links here mm-hmm. in the um, in the comments in the description, so you can go ahead and check out some of these articles that that we uh, referenced to earlier in the show. So yeah, on that note, you know, I'm Petrie. I'm Chris, and thank you for joining us. <laughs>